What's going on, y'all? It's J.D. Piquel. Today on The Hard Count, we're going to talk about what we learned about Texas after yesterday's game against Alabama. Welcome into The Hard Count, the people show for every single thing that you know and that you love about college football. It happens here on a daily basis. Nick Brake doing the heavy lifting. You can help drive the show by subscribing to this channel. If you like podcasts, you're more of a podcast person. We're available on Spotify. We're available on Apple. Wherever you get your podcasts, you can listen to The Hard Count. So Texas pushed Alabama to the absolute limit yesterday in Austin. Final score was Alabama 20, Texas 19. I want to make this clear. We are not breaking down this game right now, but we got to talk about what did we learn about Texas. Now, on tonight's show, on our longer form version of the hard count, we will react to this game. We will, react, you know, we will break down this game. But as of right now, what did we learn about Texas? Just from yesterday's sample size in Austin against the big bad boys of the Crimson Tide, what did we learn about Texas? And that was one of the things that we talked about heading into this game. As a Texas fan, you have a phenomenal opportunity. As a Texas program, you have a phenomenal opportunity to measure yourself against the standard in college football. Georgia won the national title a year ago. I understand that Ohio State has been one of the best teams in the country for a long, long time. But Alabama under Nick Saban is without a doubt the gold standard in college football. And so for Steve Sarkeesian in his second year in Austin, for Quinn Ewers, his first year as starting quarterback for Texas, this is a really good chance to see just how you measure up. Now, going into the game, nobody thought they'd do anything. Just to, let's call it what it was. I mean, Alabama was favored by 20 points. And that line opened at 14. The smart money kept going on Alabama. So the first thing I was impressed by from Texas is they didn't flinch. They did not flinch, and they did what I think we expected them to do. They came in swinging. They emptied the clip, and they challenged where they thought they had opportunities to challenge. Xavier Worthy was a critical part of that game plan. They checked that DB unit for Alabama early and often, and Quinn Ewers was dealing. He had 134 yards in that first half alone. I mean, the kid showed a lot of moxie, a lot of poise on a stage like that against the number one team in the country in Alabama. So I think the first thing that I was taken away from when I watched this game was all that talent at Texas that they get a lot of flack for, to be honest, because the narrative around Texas from the more broad 30,000 foot view circles, the people don't really watch the game like you and I is, yeah, a lot of talent at Texas, but so what? Five stars go there. You never really hear from them again. A lot of talent at Texas, but have they ever really done anything with that talent? No. And that wasn't the case. That was not the case Saturday against Alabama. You saw that talent on display in Austin. You saw Xavier Worthy going deep and beating DBs like a drum. You saw that defense swarming around and making life difficult for Bryce Young. You saw Quinn Ewers out there dealing, trying to live up to that enormously high billing he got from the scouting and recruiting world. You saw the talent on display. Even more so, you saw the talent show some resistance to Alabama because this is the same team a year ago, or the same logo, I should say, a year ago that lost to Kansas. No knock on Kansas, but they should not be losing to Kansas with the amount of talent they recruit in Austin. And so to see that talent on display and ultimately prove that it was real, prove that the guys they're getting into their program are actual ballers. They're not just missing from a scouting perspective they're not missing from a development perspective in this class at least in this group in the locker room that has to be encouraging as a texas fan to know okay at the very least we got it under the hood at the very least we know we have dudes in this program that can play they don't just get here and then all of a sudden magically stop being talented or stop having the ability that we recruited them for for whatever reason, that's been a narrative around Austin. I think they did a phenomenal job and ultimately silenced a lot of those critics from what we saw on Saturday. On top of that, I saw Texas have a lot of competitive maturity in this game because it would have been so easy for Texas to just sort of hang their head, start pouting after Jace McClellan went 80 yards on that touchdown run. Because you sort of thought maybe it was sort of leaning a little bit towards Texas. They had a little bit of momentum and then big play, just gash play. And then you kind of got that feeling like, all right, is Alabama just going to roll now? Is Alabama awake now? Are they just going to get after them? That wasn't the case. 
Texas went blow for blow and made it a game until the absolute last whistle pushed them to the absolute edge. And for Texas, that's another thing we talk about. Culture. Hey, there's bad culture in Austin. That locker room is a bunch of me, guys. When the going gets tough, they all sort of just disperse. I didn't see that. I didn't see that at all. I saw a team that played four quarters and pushed the best team in the country to beat them in the last seconds. I saw a team that banded together when things got tough. You saw a lot of calls not go Texas' way. Most notably, that play in the end zone that really should have been a safety. That ref's car was 1,000% towed during the game. He 1 million percent got the Queen Ewers treatment. And if the UT parking didn't do that, they got their own issues to sort out. I mean, they, maybe they have a culture issue at UT parking. It would have been easy for Texas to hang their head, folks. It would have been easy for them to tap out. And I never once saw that from this group. Every time the offense couldn't get it done, the defense stepped up. Many times, whenever they needed to find a way to make a play on offense to extend the game, they did. There was a lot of grit I saw from that Texas sideline. In a game where it's, I think it was like 120 degrees on the field, melt your shoes kind of hot. I was really impressed and encouraged by that with Texas. Now, here's my question. You get up for Alabama, right? I don't think it's a stretch to say this was the biggest game in Austin in a long time. To have Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide roll into DKR and have that game circled all offseason, having it be game two, so it wasn't like you had to wait till game eight when Texas still has a lot to play for right now. That was a high-stakes, high-intensity game. It's not difficult to get up when that team comes to your house. Now, here's what I want to see. And we saw this a couple times around the college football landscape yesterday, especially at Notre Dame. We'll get into that tonight. Can you do it next week? Can you do it game to game? Can you do it when you don't have the Crimson Tide rolling into DKR? Can you do it when you got to go on the road? Can you do it when you got to play Baylor at home? Can you do it when you got to play... Oklahoma State. The games that aren't going to be circled, underlined, highlighted, and that's not to make a statement on Oklahoma State or Baylor. I'm just using that as an example. When you play the games that you maybe don't have as much hype around, college game day is not in town for it. Are you still able to have that same intensity, that same focus, that same energy, that same competitive maturity? Because that's the next step for Texas in my mind. That's the next thing I want to see from them. Can they string it together? Because great teams, mature teams, teams that play really meaningful games late into the year, they don't allow the game itself to dictate their energy and their performance. It's a faceless opponent each week. We got Louisiana Monroe. They're getting our best. We got Alabama coming to town. They're getting our best. We got Baylor. They're getting our best. Kansas, they're getting our best. That needs to be the tempo for Texas going forward for them to take the next step. And we're not into moral victories here on the hard count. No such thing as a good loss. No such thing as a bad win. But if you were to take away some positives from this game, you took the standard in college football to the wire in a game where nobody gave you a shot outside of that locker room. So for Texas moving forward, a lot to build on. I sincerely hope that Quinn Ewer's injury isn't season ending. Again, we're going to break that down more tonight and how the game flowed and what he did ultimately and how the offense looked different with Hudson Card. But they move with Quinn Ewer's in the game. With Quinn Ewer's in the game, there may even be a different outcome. I'm not ready to say that because it's woulda, shoulda, coulda. But Quinn Ewer's, you could tell the offense was different with him in the game, a different threat with him in the game. So I hope that he doesn't have a season-ending injury. Hope he's all right. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to watch Texas now. I'm excited to watch what they do going forward. We were always excited to watch Texas, but after the show they put on yesterday and pushed Alabama, there's a lot to build off of, a lot to be excited about in Austin. So that's it for us here on The Hard Count. We appreciate you tuning in. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at JD Pacal. Again, we are on air tonight recapping the wild Saturday that was yesterday in college football in week two. So tune in for that. We're going to keep the party rolling. We will see y'all next time. 
Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.